You know, I am sick to death of these articles framing the violation of boys like it doesn't mean anything. Whereas if there's a girl that's violated, we wait for the chair. This is sickening and it gets on my goddamn nerves and it needs to stop. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Onyx Report, Black Masculinist News for the day. Yeah, man, we got to talk about this. Sick of this, man. But anyway, before we get into it, y'all know the deal. Like, share, subscribe, join, and donate. Support the channel if you will. You can do that on Patreon. You can do it on PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. You can do the Super Chat or Super Sticker right here on YouTube. Or you can go to Patreon and become a monthly member through there as well. There are different membership levels uh, on both Patreon and YouTube. You can choose the perks you like. But on Patreon, you can also become a member who supports the Institute for Black Male Studies with one donation per month going to the Onyx Report and to Black Male Studies. So consider doing that. Appreciate your support in advance. Also, the other option you can also look at is, uh, you know, you can support via merchandise. And if you're interested, some of the things that are here, these are actually pretty brand new. Got the Black Men Matter shirts, got the Frederick Douglass pieces, the Tommy Curry pieces, and the uh, ever popular I Am a Black Masculinist piece uh, that comes in shirts, sweaters, the whole deal. Bills, I know what it is. So, again, in advance, appreciate the support. So, yeah, man, we got to talk about a couple things. Um, and I have to pose the question. When does the violation of boys actually matter? Only to lar the larger society, not only to the black community, but even to black men themselves. When does it matter? You know, I probably wouldn't have cared as much. I would have just assumed this was a rite of passage as it's been presented for decades when it comes to the sexual violation of boys, underage boys. Um, but, you know, becoming a father changed a lot of that. And when you've actually stared at the face of innocence, you know, really looked at innocence, I mean, coming out the womb, holding in your hands, complete innocence. You know what I mean? I've talked about this before, man. I remember seeing my son try to formulate a lie for the first time and try not to bust out laughing while he was doing it, you know, and noticing that it wasn't malicious. It wasn't exploitive. It was just little kid so seeing the violation of these kind of boys um you know as they get a little bit older and then seeing in many instances that violation being passed off as some kind of gift to boys but if you even contemplate suggesting that the same violation happening to girls is some kind of gift you might be committed so what am i talking about well let's start with the first story so here this is based off of, you can find this on a lot of different places. I just went with dailymail.co.uk because they, they tend to dredge up some information that isn't readily available most of the time. This piece, as you can see, is entitled Oklahoma Middle School Teacher 28 is charged with sending naked photos and video uh, to student 16 after telling him she'd heard rumors that he liked her. Now, clearly, this is not a case of, um, as they say on YouTube, grape. But we also know, again, this was a 28 year old man sending naked pictures of himself to a 16 year old girl at his school. And he was a teacher. There wouldn't even be a separation between what he did and the, and the popular imagination around what he did. Right. It'd be the same thing. But I noticed when it comes to things like this, people want to parse through the details, mainly to protect some vestige of innocence in her, I guess. But anyway, let's get to it. Right. An Oklahoma middle school teacher faces felony charges over claims she sexed a 16-year-old boy after telling him she'd heard he liked her. Ivy Renault, 28, is charged with using technology to engage in communication for sexual pru uh, prurient interest with a minor and a warrant is out for her arrest. Former Midwest City middle school teacher has not been taken into custody. This might be, this is a week old, so she might have been uh, since then. Uh, the former... Um, Okay, uh, Oklahoma's age of consent is 16, but adults in a position of authority can still be charged for having sexual relationships with children, age, eight, children aged 18 and under. New court documents filed in Oklahoma County District Court reveal that Renault met the teen who was a student in the district at a soccer practice. 
Renault was an assistant soccer coach at the time, heard rumors that he liked her and wanted to watch her run. Uh, KFOR uh, reported uh, citing court documents. Renault allegedly then added the teen on Snapchat and sent him three or four nude photos and an inappropriate video, which the teen showed to a few of his teammates, according to court records. Social media expert Patrick Allman told a KFOR that social media users should assume any photos they send, they send might be as might excuse me might be might as well be posted to a billboard for all to see. Despite the notion that with Snapchat the images theoretically disappear after a short time, I'm trying to enlarge this here. Oklahoma, I'm, oh goodness, man, I'm all over the place. I'm really tired. That must be what this is. Oftentimes with young people and our teachers, there's an implied sense of trust. Almond said one of the advantages of Snapchat has been that it's very short, it's very quick, and it and then it disappears and theoretically it's gone forever. Before you hit send, you should assume that you might as well be taking that picture and posting it on a billboard. You know, we already said that. Very pretty young lady. Right? Yeah. Renault admitted to Midwest City Police that she sent the photos to the team, but denied any sort of physical relationship. Yeah, because that usually makes it better when a teacher says that, particularly a male teacher. And he says, no, I didn't actually touch her. I just sent pictures of my penis. Yeah, that usually changes the dynamic. We all tend to let those men go, right? They go home right in time for dinner after that. Former teacher only confessed that they had talked about hanging out one time, but never went through with it. According to court documents, school district previously issued a statement to KFOR regarding the incident and confirmed that Renault is no longer employed by Middale schools. However, her photo appears to still be in the staff directory on the school's website. District officials were notified of an alleged relationship between a Middale staff member and a student. We reported the information to law enforcement so that they could begin an investigation. Staff members no longer employed, so blah, 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 blah. And we've worked closely with the family of the student in the wake of the accusation. We will continue to fully cooperate with the authorities. Renault is now facing a felony charge. And as they said in this article, she hasn't been taken into custody. I believe that might have changed since then, but it's not the only case. Let's look at another. All right, this one comes uh, to us in Hamden, Connecticut. Former teacher arrested, accused of having sex with a student at the school. There you go. Having sex. You know, those two words sound so innocuous. It's, it, it, it sounds like you know, you met somebody on a dating app, you got together for dinner and you had sex. Yet again, the portrayal of men involved in this situation is that it's clearly an example of rape. Where they are by where somebody has been violated, uh, regardless of whether or not that's specifically the case, even if there's some parsing of hairs over age, uh, when it comes to male aggressors, it is without question treated like a violation. But even the framing of the article title gives you a sense of how gender is treated, treated differently when women actually are the aggressors who violate um, the innocence of young men or young boys, right? So, former teacher arrested, accused of having sex with a student at the school, Hamden, Connecticut. School officials at Booker T. Washington Academy have released a statement following the arrest of a former teacher. Hamden police said on November 10, 2021, the department received a report of an inappropriate text message, text message between a teacher and a group of students between the ages of 12 and 13 years old. Hamden police said this happened to happen at the Booker T. Washington Academy on Circular Ave. Police identified the teacher as Dominique Maynard, 27, of New Haven. Hamden police said the investigation revealed that Maynard sent inappropriate text, mess text messages to a group of students, including a 13-year-old male student. Police said the investigation also determined that Maynard engaged in sexual intercourse with the 13-year-old student on more than one occasion at the school. John Taylor, executive director of Booker T. Washington, Washington Academy, released a statement following the arrest. We know it'll be a long road of re to recovery for us, but for us, this arrest means the investigation found credence in our initial complaint. When we first discovered the misconduct, we acted quickly to alert authorities and took the proper steps to secure our scholars' well-being by being transparent and working to assist in the investigation. All along, our primary focus remained on the safety of every scholar enrolled in our academy. With this most recent development, we will continue to work together with our scholars, their families, and Booker T. and the Booker T. Washington staff 
to ensure our parents continue to have confidence in our commitment to the safety of our community. May 31st, Maynard was charged with four counts of second degree sexual assault and four counts of risk of injury to a minor. She was held on a $100,000 bond and will appear in Meriden Superior Court on June 3rd. Yo. These are the kind of things that I think get overlooked so readily on a regular basis. And it's time that we start pushing back, not only on the violation of our boys, but pushing back on the notion that somehow our boys don't deserve any type of serious address uh, in regard to this, meaning that for the most part, and I've heard this casually on social media for years, the idea be, being that all men like sex, all boys like sex, therefore any woman that gives it, it's a mystical, magical gift and boys need to be happy and in receiving it, even if they're underage, even if they're violated. And again, I've quoted this many times. If you go look at uh, Dr. Tommy Curry and Ebony Utley's paper, She Touched Me, one of the things they talk about in that piece is how boys who are sexually violated under age actually do have some of the, many of the same reactions that girls have when they're violated at that age. There's a lot of trauma that needs to be reconciled. And that trauma tends to carry with carry on with them into their adult years especially without the proper therapy. But for the most part, as long as we treat this, particularly in African-American culture, as a gift and a rite of passage, rather than a violation of their innocence, many of these young boys won't even process that they have a problem, but it will tend to come out in their relationships. This becomes a problem as they grow older, and these kinds of experiences become cemented by years of distance from the occasion. The violation that this causes and what traumas can come about from that, not easy to predict but they happen nonetheless. And then people wonder why they have problems relating to certain types of men. But I can't tell you how many men I've run across that write me stories about how they were violated. And again, going back to that paper that I mentioned from Curry and Utley, one of the things they talk about is that black boys have the youngest age in regard to sexual debut, meaning they tend to lose their virginity at younger ages than any other demographic. And most of the time they're violated by older girls and women. And black girls' viol uh, sexual de debut are several years older. So I think black boys tend to lose their somewhere. There's between, what, uh, 10 and 12, if I'm not mistaken. But when it comes to girls, it's right over 15, 16 years old. Um, but again, many of these boys are also violated by grown women, like the ones we're seeing in this report. So again, for the well-being of our boys, I hope we will start to take this more seriously and start to hold these institutions, these these you know, these newspapers, these articles responsible for even the language they use, language that has no problem incriminating, incriminating men and giving the soft shoe to women as if this was some kind of, um, you know, I don't know, date at a restaurant that turned into sex at someone's apartment between two consenting adults. This bullshit has to stop. Predators are predators. If we're talking about equality, then why don't we actually start acting like we're talking about equality? where women aggressors, be they sexual violators or murderers, are actually treated as such. Why? Well, part of the reason is the prisons don't actually even exist for us to start treating women the way we do men when they violate the law. But at the very least, in the court of public opinion, that should be something we should, we're more readily apt to do now that we've seen this happen way too often. Y'all have a good one. Peace.